what's going on guys a long time no what's for dinner huh <laughs> i finally decided to throw one together i've been keeping some recipes in my back pocket that i knew i wanted to share with you guys but lordy have mercy i just have not had the time to sit down and edit but i knew that eventually i would so i saved everything right now i'm currently sitting on my back porch and if you hear weed eaters and dogs barking and things like that i apologize but it is what it is the lighting out here is a lot better than inside my house at seven o'clock at night so anyways i have four meals that we tried that we really enjoyed that I want to share with you guys anything that I do share with you guys in my videos I will leave linked down in my description box below but other than that um, I guess I need to probably introduce myself for those of you who are stopping by for the first time hello welcome my name is Jennifer um, my channel is southern mama drama and I usually share a lot of shopping here. Every once in a while we'll do a what's for dinner video. I'm not making any promises with those. I would really, I, I would really love to get one of those out at least once a month. That would be, I think that's gonna be my goal. Uh, <laughs> we shall see. But anyways, I hope that you like what you see enough to wanna stick around and subscribe. It's totally free and Let's get the show on the road, shall we? All right. What's going on guys? Tonight for dinner, we are going to be making this crock pot chicken and gravy meal. This is what it looks like. I will leave the recipe linked down in my description box below but you know me i love recipes that are simple to follow and don't require a ton of ingredients so this is it this is it guys all right so what you need is chicken the recipe calls for one pound you need two packets of chicken gravy mix one can of cream of chicken soup one cup, uh, not one cup, this is two, <laughs> two cups of water, garlic powder, and salt and pepper. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and mix the chicken gravy, the cream of chicken soup, and the water in the crock pot and get those mixed together. Adding in two cups of water here. In goes my can of cream of chicken. Oh, that made a nice little plop. <laughs> okay, and now we're going to add in the two packets of chicken gravy mix. There's one. fabulous and the recipe says to season the chicken breasts on both sides before like adding them to this but I don't see any point in doing that so I'm just gonna add the ingredients directly to here so don't put too much salt because all of these things you just added are kind of salty on their own and then some pepper I love fresh ground pepper. It's so good. Give that a little mixity mix mix. Okay, and then now I'm going to go ahead and add in my chicken breasts. My chicken breasts are frozen, so I'm going to cook these on probably high for a little bit, and then I'll knock it down to low, but I didn't thaw my chicken. <laughs> so, yeah. And these are the chicken. Hold on. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. These are the chicken breast tenderloins from Sam's Club. 
making my life easy. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna drop in some chicken. And it, the recipe calls for one pound, but I don't know, I'm just gonna do what I think my family will eat. So that's at three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's equivalent to like probably three chicken breasts, I would say, possibly. I think that's gonna be good. We're gonna go with eight. <laughs> and then the recipe just says to make sure that all of the chicken is covered in the gravy. So, probably not the best utensil to use for this, but it's all right. Okay, looks good. Okay, I'll put the lid on and let this cook for about, the recipe says six hours on low, I believe. Hold up. Cover and cook on low for about six to eight hours. I always start my recipes out on high usually, and then I come back and like, lower them i just like to get the temperature up and going and then lower it back down so yeah we'll see you back in just a little bit okay it's 5 30 the chicken is done and i'm making a recipe um here that i have not done before it's uh air fryer parmesan green beans i bought a bag of green beans from aldi's today and i've snapped the ends off of them and washed them up real good we're gonna add in one stick of butter that's been melted, of course, obviously. We're gonna add in one tablespoon of minced garlic. We're gonna add in a teaspoon of um, salt. <laughs> How much will I do? I'll tell you when. And then we're gonna do, I think it said a fourth of a teaspoon of black pepper. Measuring with vine heart. And then we're gonna do, except it calls for a half a cup of fresh shredded Parmesan, but I don't have fresh shredded. So we're just gonna use the stuff you put on top of your spaghetti. Or pizza. Or pizza. Be just as good. Now we're just going to toss this to coat it. And you want to be really careful with your green beans so you don't tear them all to pieces. Because they have feelings. They do have feelings. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and spray some non stick spray in my air fryer basket here. And just going to put them in. And I'm going to cook them on 400 for about 15 minutes, but I am going to shake them every so often. So. Okay, green beans just went off. Ooh, those look scrumptious. They smell really good. I can't wait to test those out here in just a minute. Okay. Chicken is done. The last step is to add in a half a cup of sour cream. Hello. I want some in there. Okay. I got it mixed up as best I could. There is still some little pieces of sour cream in there that didn't get mixed in. But you know what? It's okay. It'll be fine. It'll taste fine. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this plated up. And then I'll share with you guys what my plate looks like. Alright. Here is my plate. I'm going to dig in. That looks really good. Smells good. Just um, put the green beans back in the air fryer for a few more minutes to crisp them up some more. He likes stuff crispy, so. Alright, we're going to dig in. Alrighty, friends. Tonight for dinner is Swedish meatballs. This is the easiest recipe, I think, of this whole video. All you need is homestyle meatballs, a can of cream of mushroom, a packet of ranch, and a half a cup of water or milk. We're gonna take this whole bag of meatballs and we're gonna throw that in our crock pot and then take your one can of cream of mushroom soup and just plop it right there on top. 
dang, I was trying to get it to stand up. <laughs> it fell over. And then you're going to add your ranch in. I don't know about you, but my family absolutely loves meatballs. So I'm always trying to find different recipes to kind of mix them up a little bit. Go ahead and add in your milk. You can also use water if you don't want to use milk. I think I already said that. <laughs> and now we're just going to go ahead and toss it around. Get all the ingredients kind of incorporated in here best you can because obviously the meatballs are frozen so it's you know kind of tough but we're gonna put this in the crock pot for four hours on low yes we are and meanwhile i'm gonna go ahead and make some what was this i don't even know what this was oh um oh yes it was a little squash parmesan squash i believe is what it was so <laughs> we've got the squash cut up here we're gonna go ahead and season the squash with some salt and I believe pepper and I think I did some garlic powder perhaps can't remember <laughs> this is going well after I get that side seasoned I go ahead and flip them around and do the same on the other side and it wasn't garlic powder I'm sorry guys it was olive oil that I drizzled on I knew there was a third ingredient Next, I'm going to go ahead and take some of this, I think it's like Frigo brand Parmesan and put that on top and we're going to throw that in the oven. I can't remember what I cooked it on, but I'm pretty sure it was probably 400 for like 20 minutes. <laughs> it's usually like the magic time and temperature. No, we didn't sample one on the end. Yeah, we did. Anyway, this turned out great. I served it on some egg noodles. We had some little toast on us. I think we had some hamburger buns or something left that night. So we just used those and it turned out great, guys. Try it. You'll love it. Tonight for dinner is sweet and sour chicken. Here are all the ingredients that you'll need. With the exception, I don't have the rice out. But that's going to have to be made different. That's not part of this recipe. You'll need a half a cup of water, a fourth of a cup of rice vinegar, a third of a cup of brown sugar. This is all I had left, or I would have packed it. <laughs> uh, three tablespoons of ketchup. Three, no, two tablespoons of soy sauce. And two teaspoons of cornstarch. Those are the ingredients you need for the sauce. For the actual stir fry, you need olive oil, which I haven't gotten out yet. Y'all know what that looks like. I've got some chicken breast here that I have thawed out. Got an onion. The recipe calls for one red bell pepper and one green. I've got two green because they were kind of small. And then the last thing is a can of pineapple tidbits. And then of course you just make your rice to go with it and whatever other sides you decide you want with it. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. First things first is making the sweet and sour sauce. To a bowl, you're gonna add in a fourth of a cup of rice vinegar. A third of a cup of brown sugar, three tablespoons of ketchup, not me eyeballing it. What did y'all expect? <laughs> two tablespoons of soy sauce and two teaspoons of cornstarch. And we're just going to combine these ingredients and we're going to sit this aside because we'll need it later. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Jennifer's Circus. One, two, three, four. Be amazed! <laughs> For my next act, we're going to be playing with fire. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, we've added some oil to a pan here. I think I've got this set on like a medium heat. I've cubed up the chicken breast and cooked those oh so fast. Magic tricks are just <laughs> abundant here. After the chicken has cooked through and all, I just went ahead and removed it from the pan and set it aside. We're gonna add some more oil to the pan. And then next, we're going to go ahead and saute our veggies that we cut up just a moment ago. We're 
We got a helper in the kitchen. What's up, Mr. Harrison? All right, we got some sauteed up veggies here to our liking. You can go a little less or a little more, depending on how my husband loves his stuff burnt for some reason. I don't know why, but he just always says, burn it for me, burn it. Anyway, we're going to add the chicken back to the pan. And we're going to add in our whole can of pineapple tidbits at this point. And we're going to drizzle over that um, sweet and sour sauce that we made. We're going to get all of these ingredients combined and we're just going to let this simmer down until the sauce is just right. If you like it soupier, then just let your pineapple get warmed up and you can eat it. But we let it kind of meld down just a little bit. Is that a word? Meld? I don't know. Anyway, Mr. Harrison going to give you all a bite. Yummy, yummy. Open up. This was really good. Laura shared this with me, um, my niece and nephew's mom. Thank you, Laura. It was very good. Hope y'all give it a try. Y'all please excuse the uh, entertainment in the background. <laughs> Tonight for dinner, we are having, I found this. It's called Cheeseburger in Paradise by Jimmy Buffett. I found this, I think it was on Pinterest. I'll link it down below. But, I mean, I'm going to try it out. I mean, how can you go wrong? The ingredients look pretty basic. All right, so you need a pound of ground beef, one large onion chopped. I just pulled this out of my freezer. It's still frozen, but we're going to um, cook up the ground beef and the onions together here in just a second. You need a half a teaspoon of seasoned salt, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a dash of Worcestershire sauce. You need one cup of cheese and the person that wrote the recipe out says that they used three fourths of a cup of cheddar and a fourth of a cup of mozzarella. So I'm going to do the same. And then you need a cup of milk, uh, a half a cup of Bisquick or in my case, I've got Fistquick, <laughs> the great value brand but that's all good. And then uh, you need two eggs. The first thing we're gonna do is set our oven to 400 degrees and um, we're gonna get to cooking, guys. Let's get to cooking. Alrighty, to start this meal out, we're gonna go ahead and brown this one pound of hamburger meat. I'm just adding some nature, what is this, nature seasoning um, to the meat. I always season my meat when I'm cooking it because I just, y'all, I can't handle the smell of it sometimes. And so I feel like the seasoning kind of masks it a little bit. Anyways, we added onion in there as well how magical and then I don't know what I just said it was a seasoned salt and some garlic powder and some Worcestershire sauce I'll have this recipe linked below for all of the actual measurements anyway once we get that meat all seasoned up we're just gonna let those ingredients incorporate together incorporate we're gonna go spray us a little pan here. I figured that I would probably just need to use like an eight by eight or nine by nine. A 13 by nine would have been too big for this. We're gonna go ahead and transfer our hamburger meat into our casserole dish here. Up next, I'm gonna go ahead and add the cheeses to the top of the meat. And y'all know, I never measure out cheese. Like it'll say one cup, we might do a cup and a half. Cheeses, I mean, you can never go wrong with adding more cheese. Am I wrong or am I right? Or am I wrong? All right, up next, we're gonna make the biscuit mix to go on top and I don't know what happened with my lighting here <laughs> but the ingredients you need for that is a cup of milk two eggs and a half a cup of Bisquick and like I told you guys I had the great value brand which worked just as well we're gonna mix that up really well and then we will add that to the top of our dish here All 
right, and it's gonna go in our 400 degree oven for 25 minutes. I forgot to film my plate before I ate it. <laughs> I was not hungry. I really, really liked that dish, but it was kind of dry. I would say make it, but if you can figure out a way to not make it so dry. I don't know. Anyways, other than that, I would definitely make it again, for sure, because it was so easy. Okay, so before I start to melt, I'm gonna go ahead and get back into the AC in here. It's almost mid-September and it's still like 80s and 90s every day. Fun stuff. Anyways, <laughs> thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you did enjoy today's video. Make sure to give me a thumbs up down below. Comment down below and let me know if you decide to make any of these meals that I share with you guys today. And subscribe. Don't forget to do that. It's free, like I said. And... Make sure you hit all notifications so YouTube will let you know anytime I upload a video. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, y'all.